So Conti has finally found himself kicked to the curb by Tottenham after basically suggesting the run like a prime Weimar Germany. And now, uh, until now, I tried to hide. Whilst Burnley have been ripping through the championship like KSI ripped through Emil Heskey's career. Don't know what you're messing with, this is Heskey. And that has made a massive statement in Vincent Company's venture into management. Company has been recognised as an up-and-coming world-class manager and it looked almost destined that he will one day leave. Manchester City. So many big names in the football industry are beginning to talk about company and where he should go once he eventually leaves Burnley, if he does so. I mean, it's getting to the point where even Spurs fans are talking about wanting him. And you taking the fucking piss? Now, before we look at God himself, Vincent Company. I think we should really highlight Spurs under Conte. So it's a 3-4-3 with the wing-backs heavily involved and that midfield... Uh, it's a midfield, however they are heavily, heavily reliant on Harry Kane. I mean, pretty much everything goes through the England skipper. Kane's a focal point to every single attack and it's the point where Spurs are so reliant that him leaving this summer could cripple them. Genuinely, we could see Spurs drop drastically if Kane is to leave. You've got Son not firing, Kulazewski struggling to get going this season. It could be an absolute panic at Spurs if Kane is to go. I mean, another thing that we've also got at the Back. It's not necessarily solid, is it? We've got a dancing mammoth. Now we get to look at the saviour, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that genuinely's forehead glides through the sky like an Airbus. It's Vincent Company's Burnley. Now, if you're not familiar with what Burnley have been doing in the championship, it's been said by many that they are the greatest team to grace the championship. Yes, better than that Fulham side. Yes, better than that Reading side. And, uh... They could well so set a new points record. They're the best defensive side in the championship this season, conceding 0.8 goals per game. They've got a crazy young centre-back partnership. Hi. No, Adam, it's not the time, okay? They're not that young. I said partnership, but there's more than one. The way VK does it, we've got so many different partnerships, so I can't really just say one like I did. I mean, bit of a rookie error, really. We've actually got 24-year-old Jordan Bayer from Borussia Mönchengladbach. We've got 20 year old Taylor Howard Bellis. Shock, he's on loan from Man City. We've then got 21 year old Amin al Dakil, and it will become ever present. He's not just the only man that's been plucked from thin air from the Belgian league. We've got quite a few of them in this team. And then finally we've got a 24 year old Swede, Hajalmia Ekdal. And whilst we're talking about Burnley centre backs, if we're being realistic, Vincent Company still gets in that Spurs side. Like, I'm sorry, do you really think Eric Dyer even Romero are better than 36-year-old company. I don't think so, lads. Now, I also think a heavy focus when you look at Spurs and usually big sides, you know, the top six, they always want to be playing that good, attractive football, which I think Spurs have lost lately. However, they are still ranking the top eight for most possession per 90, which does correlate into Burnley. Obviously, arguably the best possession side in the top two divisions. Yes, it's obviously the championships. So you've got to take that in mind compared to Man City. But if you actually look at it, they're one of the third highest possession-based teams per 90 minutes across the whole of the 92, which even though it isn't a championship, that is still outrageous considering the standard that is in the championship this season. I mean, it's all right. Then we move on not just from possession, but to attacking football. Vincent Company's side are literally the most attacking side in England. A side averaging two goals per game and the biggest scorers in the whole of England, I've said it again, the top of the charts in the whole of the 92, they top it and they top it in almost every single attacking stat. Two goals per game and it's not coming on the cuff of counter-attacking football. Like I said before, they're the best possession side almost in the whole of the 92, which means it's going to be coming from the good football. Key to Spurs fans. We don't want any AFTV meltdowns now, do we? And now I mentioned Alda Kiel being plucked from nowhere in the Belgian league. This is another big segment on that. Elite recruitment. So this is just from the Belgian League, all under 3 million, all players that are being labelled as the best players in the championship. We've got Anas Zaruri. Save by the keeper, yeah. Zaruri! Zaruri! We've got Manuel Benson. Into the box now, Benson. Can he finish it? Oh, he can! That is magic from Manuel Benson! And we've got the Perlo of the championship. Genuinely, he has essences of every good midfielder to ever walk into the Premier League. It's Josh Cullen. On the line, it's the keeper. Bounces around and then it's in. Oh, he 
it's a probable goal, but it's Cullen's. It's Cullen's first goal for Burnley. A West Ham Academy graduate who kind of drifted away into Anderlecht and was key for company whilst he was in Belgium. He was then brought over to Burnley for, I think it was around 2.5 million in my days. He wins, wins that, that ball, ball so, so much. much. It's cheap business. I know people call out the parachute payments. Burnley spending loads of money in the championship. But do you think Vincent Company lost 17 players in the summer? Burnley have still made around 40 million profits. They've spent around 30 million, all in including January. That will bring in 16 players in the summer for that budget after losing literally your whole squad. You lost Nick Paul, a mainstay at Burnley for so long. You lost a partnership of Ben Mee and James Sarkowski. Now, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure they've been at Burnley longer than I might have even been alive, lads. They lost Dwight McNeil, another one that came for the academy, so that brought in some funds. And then we also lost Maxwell Corner, who we know saved Burnley's arse so many times that season. Looking for Corner! Oh, it's gone over! Couldn't that time, could he? Now, I'm sure the small budget companies worked on is getting Levy a little bit excited. Boner alert. However, it's the Premier League, Levy, so you might have to spend a little bit more than some pound land and a bit of pocket change. But can company maintain law and order over a dressing room? No misunderstanding. There's one f***ing side of me that you haven't f***ing seen, boys. Number one, West, whether we play with three, four, five, six, it's my f***ing decision. And I take the responsibility if we lose and if we don't perform well. I dare you to test him. Or even his assistant, Craig Bellamy. <laughs> yeah, if Bellamy asked me to run into a burning building, I'm oiling myself up and running backwards and doing a backflip into the building. Now, I'm aware Vincent Company isn't the second coming of Jesus Christ. And there is some negatives about his style and... I guess company as a manager. A big one is his inexperience. This is about, I think it's his second or third season as a manager. He did decent in Belgium considering the restrictions he had at that club. He's also doing an unbelievable job in the championship, which is a nugget negative. It's the second tier. The step up from the championship to the Prem is gigantic. Like it is huge. And I think to go from Burnley to Spurs is just not realistic. He can't do it. I think if you give him another two years with Burnley, two, three, three years get us up you'll get us an established premier league side and then you could be looking at a big six team most likely man city to come after the belgian he's got a full window ahead of him he's also got the backing of the owners and then he's gonna have to be paid out by a new club which is gonna be like i said it's gonna be a huge payout i just can't see a club like spurs spending that much money on such an inexperienced manager who realistically hasn't really won anything i mean i know it's spurs but still he, he, he has nothing to go this is why you should sign me. This is why I'll bring success. And he has a nice forehead. Okay. Sorry, wrong segment. But at the end of the day, the end of the story, could VK cut it? Yes. I know it is a huge risk. Literally a bigger risk than Lana Rhodes' body count. But that does not mean it wouldn't work. He's done so well with Burnley and you can see he is destined to be a great manager. Even as a player, you can see he was destined for this kind of lifestyle. You know, a top, top manager. He's a commander. He always has been. He's always been a leader. And I'm sure he will continue that through his managerial career. However, you've then got to also think, not just from Spurs' point of view, where they're looking at an inexperienced manager. However, there's not many more on the market. Do they wait it out to the summer, try get someone in and they're looking for a new challenge? Or do they risk it with a company? I mean, Julian, Nagelsmann's on the market. They'd be silly not to go for him anyway. Well, no fucking shit. But it would also be bad for his career. He can build up a good reputation with a smaller club like Burnley. He does anything somewhat significant that is so much bigger than a top four finish with Tottenham. I mean, you look at the way Conte is being treated after getting them top four in a very, very competitive situation. Yes, results haven't really gone their way, but it's still so hard to push for top four in the Premier League, especially when you've got such a squad that is un underperforming massively and realistically would it be better for him to stay at Burnley a team that are gonna back him no matter what happens pretty much or go to the reincarnation of Watford I know what I'm picking anyways if you did enjoy guys make sure you do subscribe there's a huge giveaway coming in the next video so make sure you stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one peace